Hi, everyone. It's great to see you. Happy Earth Week. Very glad to be here to get to share some information about LEAD version 5 and all the good work we're doing at USGBC. And I know you all know, you've been working with us a long time, that LEAD has long been a way to encourage voluntary adoption, get us to high performance buildings, cities, communities. And really, your collective work is the reason that we're here. So thank you for everything you've done with us and all the ways you've led with LEAD. Uh, for us at USGBC, we traveled the US the past year um, and virtually around the world to hear your feedback on where LEAD version 5 should go. What does LEAD need to do next? You were represented by your peers in our volunteer network and at those meetings, and hopefully some of you were able to join us in person. It was great to see everybody. And as you probably know, of course, LEAD is developed by our technical advisory groups, our LEAD committees, including the LEAD steering committee, and their volunteer leadership really helped to lead the way as we had those meetings last year. They were called LEAD Convene and Connect meetings, and we were able to meet over 1,100 folks globally, and that was in 38 countries and 14 in-person and online meetings. So again, thank you to everyone. It was really exciting and fun to get to talk about the future, talk about where we wanted LEAD to go, and now we are hard at work putting that together so that we can preview a LEAD version 5 at Greenville this year in September. And I hope everyone is planning to join us here in Washington, D.C. And as part of those conversations, we heard loud and clear there was a collective call that LEAD continue to lead the way in this critical time for all of us, and that we focus on climate change, resilience, equity, human health and well-being, and of course, biodiversity and ecosystem protection. And that's reflected in hopefully something that all of you have seen, the Future of LEAD principles that we published last June. That was really meant to set goals, provide a framework for the way that we would do our LEAD development, both for version five and certainly well beyond. You know, we're all looking to those 2040, 2050 goals and LEAD needs to lead the way throughout. And the data in the meetings that we received, we did a lot of polling and conversations while we were there, and it showed that most folks in attendance really encouraged a strong focus on decarbonization. I kept asking the question and getting pretty much the same feedback that about half the points should go towards decarbonization. And that's decarbonization broadly for both new and existing buildings, not just operational, although that's obviously critically important. So in the future of LEED, we talked about, you know, at building city and community levels, promoting decarbonization, reducing or eliminating on-site combustion, making sure that buildings had lower peak heating and cooling loads, that we were continued to focus on grid harmonization, that we were able to reduce or in some cases eliminate embodied carbon, certainly focusing on building reuse and other forms of buildings that can really have much lower embodied carbon uh, or materials that can have lower embodied carbon. Um, adapting approaches around things like electric vehicles and micro mobility and ability to get around perhaps in different ways. Um, looking obviously at refrigerants with low global warming potential and really making sure we were collecting and analyzing data and allowing projects to collect and analyze data at both the building, city, community, and portfolio scale. And hopefully all of you have heard our board of directors podcast of last year uh, talking about the work that we're planning to do around portfolios. And then we really said for the first time that we might explore some options for say platinum level buildings to have to do more, um, to actually be at that climate ready, maybe zero carbon, um, at least readiness on the design and construction side. And then for existing buildings, we want to make sure we catch all those buildings that need to be moving to higher performance, reducing, having a decarbonization plan, and reporting on their milestones. <clears throat> so as one step towards these goals, I'm really excited to let you know that in February, we released two new alternative compliance paths that were focused on the electrification of buildings. And that's EA pilot credit 160 and 161. So please go take a look. One path is prescriptive and one path is performance. Um, and we really did those with the goal that buildings be capable, uh, are built capable of running without on-site combustion, except at very low outdoor temperatures, that buildings have low peak heating and cooling loads, that buildings reduce other energy loads and invest in renewable power. 
So please take a look at those. Those are alternative paths available right now for projects pursuing lead version 4 and 4.1. They're available for your use, and we want everyone to test them out and give us feedback because that's a great lead into what we want to do for version 5. So as we continue to work on implementing the principles set out in Future of Lead, we knew we also wanted to take some action in the current version of Lead, in Lead version 4 and 4.1. So I want to ask for your help um, and your input on taking that action. And of course, 4 and 4.1 are available now as we work towards a lead version 5. And you know, if you've been around for a while, it takes some time to bring a lead version to market. Um, even you know, when we have content to share at GreenBuild, we'll go through our ballot process, which includes a lengthy public comment period. We want to hear from everyone. We want to revise and edit as needed. Um, so while we're working hard on a version 5, we knew version 4 would be around for a while. We knew we needed to make sure that it met the level of stringency around energy efficiency and greenhouse gas emissions reductions that the market was saying they were looking for. I mean, it's critically important that the current version in use by projects reflect those lead goals um, and that we can all move forward and move the whole market forward by giving you the tools you need to make those changes. So we do have a ballot process open now for lead version four. And those updates will raise the stringency of the energy use reductions and add a greenhouse gas emissions metric. They're really designed to better reflect the current expectations of market leadership as we see defined in local codes, in industry commitments, and in global targets. A second public comment period will open the week of April 17th. So please give us your comments, your thoughts, your feedback. Um, and if you agree with the changes, we'd love to hear from you. Um, that's usually not a time when people comment, but it'd be great to hear if you're in support. And of course, when it's time to vote, I really encourage all of you to vote on the change and ensure that we're able to collectively meet the mission of USGBC. So let's talk about version five for a minute. Check out the future of lead principles. Tell us what you think. We'd love to hear from you. As I said, we're hard at work right now. Um, our volunteer committees are, are doing some writing and putting thoughts together around lead version five. It's a great time for proposals and ideas and input from all of you. And then, of course, um, as you know, you're represented by those volunteer committees. We use a consensus body when we ballot the rating systems and that makes sure we have the market feedback. In the past, this group has been assembled after a new or updated rating system was drafted and commented on. Under our process now, which we announced changes at the beginning of the year, um, the consensus body becomes a consensus committee that's assembled at the beginning of the development process and helps to guide the creation of lead and ensure its applicability in the market. So the new process includes specialization within those consensus committees so they can focus on specific market or use types for each rating system. And we had an application that was open to all members. And so we were looking for those that had deep understanding of market sectors like existing buildings, design and construction, city, and then eventually we'll get to cities and communities and residential. Um, so those selected are going to be the voice of the markets and help guide the lead technical development alongside other technical subject matter experts and volunteers in our lead advisory groups, technical advisory groups, and the lead steering committee. So when we kicked off the development of five in January, we also announced the call for those groups and we anticipate them starting their work in May. The first focus will be design and construction and existing buildings for, for version five. Um, we also formed some working groups to support the incorporation of equity and resilience across the lead rating systems. And those working groups are looking to really inform um, the work that we're doing around those critical topics um, and bring some ideas together. Of course, building from the work that was done by the previous uh, working groups in those topics. So we're very excited to be incorporating all this work, bringing it together. Um, as I mentioned, we are working hard to do that right now. So we'd love to hear from you. Those committees for cons the consensus committees will start their work in May. Um, so if you have feedback or ideas, please let us know. And I hope that everyone plans to join us at GreenBuild in DC to get to see the first information released about LEAD version 5. And for me personally, I look forward to hearing from all of you now and in the future. Thanks and take care.